Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here from Virtualization How To, and as always, I'm on the lookout for great home lab mini PCs that make sense for running virtual machines and containers. These days, with the high energy costs, it makes a lot of sense to have an efficient home lab server. Today's little mini PC that we're going to feature is a great option in this space. It's the GMK Tech Nuckbox G3 Plus. If you've been searching for a low power, budget friendly mini PC that can run both Proxmox and VMware ESXi, or as a bare metal Kubernetes node, this could be it. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the hardware. While enterprise server gear is cool and powerful from a capability standpoint, they are power hungry and they will definitely make a noticeable impact on your electricity bill, especially with the high costs around the globe in 2025. And with the summer coming up in the Northern hemisphere, at least, cooling costs and considerations also come into play. Many PCs like the G3 Plus, I think are the way forward and they offer a smart alternative. They are quiet, efficient, and surprisingly powerful from a compute perspective. So whether you're spinning up containers or you're just wanting to experiment with various hypervisors, you need something that's not going to roast your power bill. So what are the specs of the G3 Plus? The specs of the GMK Tech Nuckbox G3 Plus that I have for testing include the Intel N150 processor, and this processor will burst up to 3.6 gigahertz. The unit that I have as well has the 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, which is upgradable to 32 gigs, a one terabyte NVMe me drive, Intel UHD graphics, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and an Intel i226V network adapter. And that's important. That's going to be really key to allowing this little mini PC to have a number of hypervisors running on it. It also includes a SATA 2442 slot, which opens up some interesting storage configurations. And more on my thoughts on that in just a second. And what about the performance of this little unit with this processor? Well, the N150 isn't a beast of a processor by any stretch, but it's not supposed to be. It's basically four efficiency cores of the Twin Lake CPU. You get the point. This is not meant to win any benchmark wars, but it's meant to be an efficient processor with quite a bit of performance. And it also has the Intel i226V network adapter in this configuration. So that's that opens up tons of options, and I know many are not enthused about VMware ESXi these days. However, with the reintroduction of VMware ESXi Free Edition by Broadcom, at least for now, you do have that as an option using this mini PC. So it's compatible with VMware ESXi, don't get any error messages about no network adapters found, so on and so forth. And of course, you can always install Proxmox on this unit as well, and both of those hypervisors work great. Now, I mentioned earlier about the storage configuration that perhaps that I had some ideas with here. This little mini PC has one M.2 slot, and then it also has a 2242 SATA SSD slot. So I think one of the better configurations that you could use those that combination of SSDs would be to boot off of the 2242 SATA SSD, then use the NVMe drive for your VMs or container storage. And this helps, of course, to have your OS drive on a, another physical drive and then have your VMs and containers on yet another drive. Now you could also boot something like Ubuntu server with the 2242 drive and the NVMe drive could be something very interesting, I think, for either just storing your VMs on containers running something like KVM, or I think another really cool thing that I would like to test with multiples of this unit would be to use a secondary NVMe drive as a Ceph OSD drive. So actually creating a Ceph cluster or persistent storage for your Kubernetes cluster. So what about power consumption with the GMK Tech G3 Plus? Well, this is where the G3 Plus, I think, really shines. At idle in Proxmox, this thing sips along at about 10 watts. And at full load with 100% CPU, it only goes up to around 21 watts in my testing. And that's using what I typically do with Proxmox installed 
installed is I installed the STUI tool as well as the Linux stress utility. And those tools will effectively take any CPU to its knees to 100% with synthetic workloads. That's the value that I saw with 21 watts, 100% CPU with the Linux stress utility. So all in all, that is extremely efficient. My Ryzen 9 7945HX processor, while it is an efficient processor, a laptop style processor in a desktop form, at least with my server bills that I have for Minis Forum, it still will burst up to around 100 watts. Now, if I turn the core performance boost off, I can essentially put a ceiling on the power draw at around 65 watts in my testing. Still very efficient for a home lab, but it just gives you a perspective of just how efficient, how much less power consumption you're going to get out of this N150 processor in this G3 Plus mini PC. Now let's talk just briefly about graphics processing. This is something that we most likely are not going to be worried about with this unit in a home lab. However, it is interesting to note that it has the Intel UHD graphics, and while those are not groundbreaking for uh, tremendously fast gaming or anything like that, that graphics chipset is able to hand dual 4K at 60 hertz without flinching. So you're going to have decent video performance with this unit. But what about home lab potential? I honestly think this little mini PC has great home lab potential. It runs VMware ESXi and Proxmox, and you can definitely use it as a Kubernetes node or a cluster of Kubernetes nodes. For anyone just getting started in a home lab, wanting something super small footprint, super cheap, as well as very power efficient, I think the home lab potential just from those characteristics alone are definitely worth it for this particular mini PC. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of the GMK Tech Knuckbox G3 Plus. Well, in terms of pros, the Intel NIC means compatibility with Proxmox and ESXi. And again, while many are not enthused about VMware, it just gives you options. And I think that adds to any value of hardware that you're thinking about purchasing or investing in. Having more options than not actually is value. So I do think from that standpoint, this is a tremendous value since it has an Intel i226B network adapter. And that also is a two and a half gig network adapter. So you get multi gigabit speeds with this little mini PC. Also, we've talked in depth about this already, but you get super low power draw with the G3 Plus. 10 watts idling in Proxmox, and then with 100% CPU, 21 watts, that is phenomenal. And I would not blink an eye about running that 24 by 7 by 365. It's also very quiet, as you would imagine, very cool to the touch after even after 100% CPU usage. So all in all, I think it's very solid what you get for the price of this unit. So now let's talk about the cons. It, it is a short list, but I think these items are worth mentioning. First of all, it has no USB-C port, so if you need USB-C connectivity, this unit does not have that. It also has a single RAM slot, so that means you're not going to be able to fit multiple SODIMM modules into this unit. You only have one DDR4 SODIMM slot, so that is upgradable at a max, and currently there is nothing larger than 32 gigs of memory memory for DDR4 SOTA memory. So do keep that in mind. Also, as we mentioned, I don't think this con really weighs into home lab per se. It's not a powerful graphics processing mini PC. I mean, let's face it, it's an N150 CPU and it has the Intel UHD graphics. So you're not going to be able to play the latest titles on this mini PC without some serious lag and performance degradation there without setting your settings super, super low. So this is not a graphics mini PC, but again, I think for a home lab enthusiast, that's not going to weigh into the, the equation. All in all, I think for most home lab enthusiasts, we're not going to be buying this mini PC with those expectations. We're going to be using it for other things such as virtualization. So let's talk about price of the GMK Tech Knuckbox G3 Plus. For eight gigs of DDR4 memory, with 256 gigs of storage, 
storage, it's $138.99. For 16 gigs of memory with 512 gigs of storage, it is $168.99. So either those prices will not break the bank, and I think it's actually a really good value for what you get in this mini PC. And don't forget to look at the description. I've got the Amazon links there so you can easily pick up this mini PC if it looks like something that you would like to add to your home lab fleet. So let's wrap this up. Should you pick up the GMK Tech G3 Plus? I think if you want a quiet, low power home lab server that can run real hypervisors such as VMware ESXi, as well as Proxmox, can handle Docker containers, LC containers, as well as act as a Kubernetes node if you want to install bare metal Linux directly on your G3, I think all of those things are doable with this box. Let me know in the comments what you think about this powerful little mini PC that's all also extremely efficient. Also, please do like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more updates. Please stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.